half of F, use four rectangles to find a lower estimate and, un and upper estimate for the area under the curve from zero to eight. And I'm going to attempt to draw on the screen. We'll see how well I do with that. Um, so the first thing is to figure out how many rectangles. So we've been told four rectangles. So that means that if the width here is zero to eight, then I know that our delta x is going to be eight minus zero all over four because of the four rectangles. So the width of each of our rectangles should be two. So I'm gonna mark out at two and mark out at six. So now the next thing is, we're supposed to find both a lower estimate and an upper estimate. So in this case, to do a lower estimate, that means that I want each of my rectangles to be underneath the red curve. So looking at the graph in this window from zero to two, to get the lower estimate, I'm thinking about all the possible y values that we have from zero to two, and the smallest y value in this window is to use two. So that's gonna be my first rectangle. For my second rectangle, again, I'm looking only in the window from two to four. And because right now I'm looking at a lower estimate, I'm thinking about all the y values between the x of two and four, and that lowest y value is happening here when x is two. Same thing when I go to four, the lowest y value is that left hand side. And between six and eight, my lowest y value is also the left hand side. So if I want a lower estimate, then I'm gonna be estimating the areas of each of these boxes. So each of these rectangles has a width of two. And the height, in this case, I'm just going to have to do my best guess from looking at the graph. So in this first box, that's pretty easy. It's, we can actually just count squares. It's four squares, but it's two high by two wide. So the area for this first rectangle looks to be about four. For that second rectangle, again, we could just visually estimate this based on the boxes. So I've got six full boxes. And then, I don't know, if we added those together, that's probably about another box and a half. Or we can think about this from trying to estimate that y value. So maybe I'm gonna say that y value right there looks to be about like 3.7. So that means that the area of this rectangle is two times 3.7. For that next rectangle, again, that is pretty darn close to hitting right here at five. So I'm actually just gonna say that that's two by five. And that looks to be at about 10. And then this last one, I'm gonna estimate that height right there. Again, if I kind of think about where that is on the y-axis, I think that height is about 5.7. So this last, this last rectangle has a width of two and then a height of 5.7. Um, now for the second part where they're asking for an upper estimate and to sketch those rectangles, I think I can turn on a different color pen here. Um, I can turn on red for sure. So to get that upper estimate, this time in each of those regions, like if I think about that region from zero to two, I'm thinking about what's the highest y value of the curve in that section. So if I were to do an, o, an upper estimate, I would be looking at making my rectangles cut off on the right hand side. And then each of those would be an overestimate of the actual area.
So my function is going to be x squared plus 1. And I want to find the area, estimate the area from 1 to 5. And I'm going to do the, the nice problem first. And so a nice problem here would be something neatly divisible in here. So I'm going to choose 4, unless you want to work with ugly numbers. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and choose 4. So we're going to take this okay. section from 1 to 5, and since we're breaking that up into four pieces, I already know the width is 1, but if I had to do the math, this would look like 5 minus 1 divided by 4. So now I know that I'm breaking that up into four pieces. So let's say that I wanted to, to use left-hand endpoints. We're going to find our area by drawing in four rectangles and always using the left-hand side of the interval to figure out the y value. So for our first interval between 1 and 2, if I'm using the left-hand side, that means I'm looking at the x value of 1. So I know the width of that rectangle is 1, but to get the height, I'm looking at plugging in x equals 1 to the function. So when x is 1, 1 squared plus 1, I'm going to get a height of 2. For that next rectangle, that width between 2 and 3, again, the width of my rectangle is 1, but I'm going to get the height by plugging in 2 into the function to figure out the height. So if x is 2, then I'll be at 2 squared plus 1. So now I'm actually at a height of 5. That next rectangle, 3 is the x value that I'm going to use to come up with the height. Again, because I'm using the left-hand side. So when x is 3, I'll be at 3 squared plus 1, or a height of 10. And then for our fourth rectangle, I'm going to be plugging in that x value of 4 into the function to figure out what that height there should be. So 4 squared plus 1, I'm at 15. Oh, wait, 4 squared is 16, isn't it? I lied. 16 plus 1, I'll be at 17. Okay. Okay. So two things really can make these messier. One is if the interval that you break it up into means that you're dealing with fractions, then just that makes all of the numbers messier, or if the function itself is messy to plug numbers into.